The next speaker is Jakobas Paletti. And he's going to talk to us about, well, we all know the old web, like the, you click and then even if you're in Germany, it's still the thing where you, the page loads and loads and doesn't load and doesn't load and you may get internet and maybe you get to the point where your website actually loads. And he's talking to us about applications or web applications that load in real time. I wonder how that works in Germany. Hi everyone, I'm Jakobus Balletti and I'm CTO and founder of, of Nefila and we build stuff with Python basically. And I've been using Django since 2009. I'm maintainer of a few uh, Django applications and one of the co-developer of, of Django CMS. I'm very thrilled to be on stage for my first time as speaker at Django in Europe and I'm scared of talking about channels with Andrew <laughs> in, uh, in the room. But yeah, so uh, for some time now, uh, web has evolved into being much more than just a click request response uh, cycle of the good old days. And the richness and complexity of modern web application has grown, and most of them requires a lot of different tools to, build, uh, to be built and run. This is awesome, as the little nerd in us is eager to learn new shiny tools, but you end up eating a complexity wall in, uh, in limiting the amount of stuff you can throw at an application to run before it starts to crumble. Uh, there are already a lot of great Python frameworks to work with the, the asynchronous web and the asynchronous communication, but would it be nice to have uh, the Django way to, to do this, this stuff? So, channels. And channels has been created to go beyond the request, the, the HTTP request response, without losing the, the Django awesomeness. It's not part of Django's framework, but is still maintained by the, by the Django project, and is a framework built to deal with all the asynchronous protocols, so it's not limited to, to web sockets, and you can use any asynchronous protocol with, with channels. And, uh, but we will assume web sockets for the rest of the talk, which is also part of the channel score. And so channels 2 is the shiny, shiniest and newest uh, version, which is just a few months old. It changed a lot of things from the channels 1 version, which served us, uh, served us for uh, a lot of years. And I will assume uh, version 2 for, for the rest of the talk. Uh, the talk will not assume any previous knowledge of, of channels. Probably Andrew will go more into the details of, of channels. I'll explain, so I, I'll explain the basic concepts and a start might be boring, but I found it very important to understand them to actually being able to write sensible applications, sens sensible channels application. I wanted this talk to be very actionable, very practical, so we will have a, a sample application, we will uh, see together, and I will drill down into the code to show the intricacies or the pitfalls of, of channels, of building channels application. So let's see some concepts. The first one is asynchronous. What, what means asynchronous? In this, in this context, uh, let's say that uh, asynchronous means event-driven. So uh, some event happens, and our application responds to it. For example, a, a client connects to a WebSocket endpoint, and a function is called. Or an object is created in a database, and another function is called. And this is a big change from, from the usual synchronous HTTP world. If you are interested in how Django works in the synchronous world, have a look at uh, Jacob Kaplan Moss talk at Django 100 who 2015 about the whole request response cycle, which is very, uh, it's been very interesting and insightful. Uh, a problem with the synchronous code is that it's generally more complex to understand and write uh, because it's non because of its non-linear uh, nature. And uh, so it, it's, it's in, uh, uh, yeah, it's more complex. And Channels 1 decided to hide the most of, his, of, of its complexity, while Channels 2 embraces it and exposes the, um, the asynchronous core. Uh, you can still write a synchronous code, but you can switch to, to the synchronous uh, if, you, if you need. Uh, one important concept, and 
base of, of, of channels is the ASGI protocol, which has been uh, developed together with channels, but is actually broader than, than channels and provide an implementation uh, independent specification of an asynchronous interface is basically has the same role as WSGI interface in the asynchronous world. And one of the big change in channels too is the SGI all the way down approach. Every building blocks of channels is an SGI application, so you can mix them, compose and pipeline basically <laughs> them to, to create your own uh, pipeline and your own uh, application. Uh, the, the first building block of, of channels is the protocol server, which is the one that uh, implements the SGI specification for a specific protocol. So it, you have um, a protocol server for WebSockets, you can have another one for, I don't know, uh, some IoT protocol or whatever. And uh, the protocol server is the part of the software that interacts with, with the connection with the network or with the external world. Uh, for um, channels, has Daphne as the reference implementation for a protocol server, which speaks HTTP or WebSockets, but yeah, you can have any kind of protocol server and you can uh, have many of them to speak different protocols. Uh, behind the protocol server, there is a routing, because when you have the connection established, you need to route this connection somewhere. And so it pops incoming messages to consumers, and again, being routers, uh, SGI application, they can be nested and composed together, and we will see uh, some examples later. Uh, you may have different protocols which will have different kind of routing. So you will have uh, basically routers according to the different protocol server you have. Scope is also one of the big change in channels too. Uh, every time a connection is established, a scope is created and all the information regarding the connection, all the information the protocol server want to uh, deliver to you are put into, into the scope. So you have the connection, and then uh, the scope is created, and the application instance is provided this, this scope. But what's... And uh, channel. Uh, channel used to be basically the, the building block of channels one version. In channels, we changed a lot its, uh, its nature. It used to be the, the basic uh, uh, communication system be, um, between the, the, the protocol server and the rest of, of the application. In channels 2 is basically an IPC mechanism for, the diff for consumers to, to speak to, to each other. And it's where events basically happens. Uh, as channels 1 is a first in, first out, at most once queue. And then we have the consumers, which are the main abstraction of building your SGI uh, applications. It handles events that happens on a connection or in a channel layer. And the big change is that consumers are stateful. So whenever a connection is established, an instance is instantiated, and the connection and the instance will live uh, together. And so each connection is managed by a single consumer instance. Um, group also changed a lot in, in version 2. They are now basically just labels attached to the to the consumer to group them <laughs> into into sensible uh, sets of of consumers instances. Events are the base concept of of synchronous programming, and they are triggered along the lifetime of our instance basically and uh, they can come from the from the connection like when the connection is established or a user send a message or they can come from the channel layer, where you something uh, put a message in the channel layer in the, and the consumer will, will respond, because in the end, consumers consume events. And last but not least, uh, WebSockets is mostly used, uh, consumed by, by JavaScript. We are not limited to it. There is Python implementation of, of WebSocket uh, client or any language, actually. 
But if you need JavaScript, channels, ships a very uh, lightweight library to make easier to, to use uh, web sockets in the, in the browser. So a brief recap, uh, channels do expose the asynchronous, uh, uh, it's a synchronous interface, the, uh, it, and it uses asyncio, so it only Python 3 and up uh, only. But, and, but this allows you to write synchronous and asynchronous code in, uh, in, in channels, so you are much more uh, free to do your own implementation. It also changed the way it uh, handles the, the connection because now everything uh, runs in the, same, uh, in the same process. So Django and the consumers run in the same process. This allows to make uh, consumers stateful along uh, the other advantages. Then you have middlewares, which are similar to the WSGI ones. And as I said, the SGI all the way down approach, which makes much more flexible in building application. But OK, enough theory. Let's see some action. And this is a sample application I, I built for this, for this talk. It's a very simple one. It's a simplified version of, a, of an application we actually built. It's not present 100% of the channel's features, but is, is a good subset to start with. Uh, what's the features of this application? It, let's call it poor folks Google Docs, because it, ha it can count active users. It can tell if other users are reading or editing a document. And you have browser notification when something happens in the, into the, the application. Up, the application logic is very, very coarse and very race condition prone. It's just, yeah, just to expose the, the channel's uh, features, not, not to how to build a, a real application. Uh, as I don't want to sacrifice kittens to the live demo god, I prefer a video, and I will uh, explain as it runs. So here on the right, you have Leela with the dashboard open, and on the left, you will have Fry. At the moment, Leela is the only one on the dashboard. You see, uh, maybe it is a little uh, not very readable, but you have a one here. Fry's login, there is the notification uh, permission check, but the users are now two. And you have these green labels on the, each document that says that nobody is doing nothing with it. Now, Fry has opened the document, so Leela knows that Fry is in because the label is yellow, and the Fry's name is, on, is there. Then Fry has opened the form, and the label turns red with the Fry name. Uh, Fry saved the, saved the document, and that's the, that's the, the notification. Leela clicks on it. The document opens, and, Fry's, uh, and on Fry's dashboard, the, the, the label turns um, yellow. So it's, it's very basic and, and stupid, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, but it allows to, to see a lot of different things regarding channels. Uh, these are the three parts of channels you are going to touch when you build your own uh, application. So channel layers, routing, and consumers. Uh, channel layers is basically where uh, th is the backend storage of uh, uh, of the messages that runs between the between the consumers. So you are basically have just to configure it and use it one of the uh, existing channel layer. You can build your own. This is one of the default ones, and you have the SGI application um, setting, which will tell the the protocol server where to uh, send the messages. Uh, I configured routing, but this, as uh, everything is an SGI application, I can put any SGI application here, not necessarily a routing. But what's the routing? Uh, routing is similar uh, to, to the Django URL conf, and uh, so you have a, um, a lot of different SGI applications here that route the messages along the uh, along the decision tree, basically. <laughs> and let's see more in detail how it works. So this is our uh, top-level uh, routing. You have the middlewares, which is this one. Uh, as I said, is similar to the WSGI ones. Basically, they add, they add data onto, onto the scope object according to yeah, some logic. 
channels have some that um, pulls data from the HTTP protocol on protocol upgrade and, pull and make it available into the, into the scope. And then there are the routers themselves. Uh, here you have the protocol type router, which routes the, the messages according to their protocol, because channels is, is multi-protocol. And you have the URL router, which is the um, WebSocket-specific router to route messages according to their path. Note that this path function is exactly the same, is exactly the Django uh, URL conf uh, function. One thing to, to bear in mind is the routing is established whenever the connection is established. So uh, each consumer is tied to a single connection. Uh, in this application, you will see a lot of different consumers. It's probably advisable to have more uh, less consumers because each consumer will have a connection, memory footprint, etc., and so it's less efficient to have too many cons uh, codes scattered uh, in many in too many consumers. And then you have the application routing, as as you see here, I pa I I link the status path to this documents routing, which is this one, which routes the path to the different uh, consumers. Again, this is exactly the same syntax as Django URLConf. This is specific to the WebSocket implementation of, of channels. Different protocols don't have the concept of path, so they have to come up with their own uh, routing uh, syntax, but this is the general uh, idea. So let's see some consumers, because there uh, is where the stuff happens. Uh, consumers are the building blocks of channels application. They are protocol, independ uh, protocol dependent, sorry, as uh, the entry points are defined by the protocol server because the protocol server defined events that happens. In our example, we are going to use the WebSocket consumer, which, uh, is, which is kind of high-level class. There are a lot of uh, classes which allows to work with more um, uh, low-level uh, uh, stuff if you need. In case of WebSocket, we have these three uh, entry points, uh, connect, disconnect, and receive according to the different events, client connect, disconnect, or send a message. They're optional. The default implementation of WebSocket consumer does something with it, like doing the accept of the connection, etc. And you are going to need to write your own uh, events manager, uh, your, your event handler, and we will see uh, why. In this example, this is a very basic consumer, very stupid one. Uh, you have on connection, there is this thing, we will see uh, more in detail later, which sends a message to a group, uh, to the users group, and there is this method defined on the same class, which matches and handles the, the events. In this case, it just relays the number of users, which is static file, so not much useful, back to the, back to the clients. And we will, go, uh, we will see the details each step later. So counting users. Uh, in our case, counting users is very safe, because uh, very simple, because we have a stateful connection. So we, when a client connects, we just increment in some way the, the number of users. We create a message here with the actual number of users connected, and we send them back to the users group. This, this group, each consumer is um, attached to a group according to this, uh, to this attribute. Uh, this is current, uh, I, I set it as, as a static uh, user's uh, string, actually. Please note the comma. This is a tuple, not, uh, not, a, not a simple string. But uh, I, can use, I will use a property here to make more dynamic in the in, in following example. So I send this message, and in the same consumer, I just read the message with a number of users, and I'll send them back to the, to the clients. I can write JavaScript. This is awesome. Uh, this is very simple JavaScript code I, uh, I've been able to write by using the, uh, the WebSocket client library shipped by, by channels. Here I connect to a, to a path. 
defined some, somewhere, but it's basically the, the endpoint I configured in the, in the routing. Then I listen to the incoming data from, uh, from the connection, and I do something with it. And it's, in this case, I just read uh, the number of users, and I update the, the label on top of the, of the window. So um, we know how many users we have, but now we want to check uh, who's, who's doing what. And in this case, we have two different consumers, one to track the single document and one to track the, the list. Uh, this is not very different from, from the other example. Here, I count the number of users I, I have, but in this case, I, I also need to check the, the status and the, and the slug. And then I send them, uh, I send back, sorry, the, the number of, of users. Actually, it's a more complex structure which says, okay, there are these users in, in this document with these phases, so read or, or edit. And please note that in this case, the group I'm sending the message to is, is a slug, which is something I captured from, from the path. And I defined, I attached this one into this number of groups defining the property, so this is dynamic. Uh, when the consumer is instantiated, it's attached to the, according to the slug of its, of its path. Again, I send a message, and this, uh, this method sends back, uh, sends back the message. But I want to go more into the details of what's happening here, because this is basically the concept, the entire concept of, of channels. So in the connect, I call this async to sync function, which is a helper function that maps the synchronous uh, part of channels, which in this case is the group send method, with the synchronous part, which is the connect. The connect is a simple uh, synchronous function, so I can use OEM here and another synchronous function. The channel layer is an attribute form on my on the consumer instance, which will map the, the current channel layer. And the group send is, is the function that actually interacts with the synchronous part and send the message. As I said, the, the self slug is the, current, is the group I want to send the message to. And what's the message? The message is uh, basically a dictionary. In this case, I using a JSON WebSocket, so it must be a JSON serializable um, dictionary. But you can, uh, if you go more into the, um, if you use different base classes, you can have also have bin binary messages. And uh, the important part here is that is the type key, which I can actually uh, can invent basically <laughs> document status, which is mapped to uh, to a method. Uh, in this case, document underscore status, which must be implemented in each uh, consumer, which uh, is attached to the slug, uh, to this specific slug group. And the important part to understand is that the, even if those two methods are implemented in the same uh, class, they are not executed into the same instances, because this is in, in, uh, called in the single instance where uh, the, the haven't uh, has been cached or happens. And this one is executed in all the consumer resistances listening on the same, on the same group. Uh, so that's, that's really important to understand that uh, by using events, you can propagate uh, things from one group to, to another. Uh, to what, sorry, to one consumer instance to, to another. Uh, the, the document list is, is more simply, it's basically the, the same, it just do doesn't count the user and, um, and, and is attached to a different, uh, to different group, but the logic is, is the same. And the front end is very similar, I connect, I listen, and then I do different stuff according to the, uh, to the, different, uh, to the different data. Uh, one important thing, uh, to, to know is that uh, you can use channels functions outside the channels world by using async to sync. You can, for example, in this normal mo model, I can just send a message to some, uh, to some group and some consumer will handle it. And this is awesome because uh, channels 2 doesn't ship data binding uh, anymore because it was 
uh, to uh, I'll say to binding to the con to the community basically to to so it, it's kind of sad but it's it's nice because the community can come up with other ideas and uh, I try to I make an experiment by resurrecting a very stupid uh, application I I built called Django Noka and we'll, we'll quickly go through it. It's based on Django Meta, which is a SEO and social media, uh, social network meta tag uh, library. But it basically hooks into Signal and sends messages to a default consumer. So this is the basic class. Uh, these are some methods. And this is the message we are going to send. And these are the methods you are going to, uh, to use. But again, the idea is that in the, in the mixing, because it's mixing based, you connect on uh, class instantiation, you connect to the different uh, events, pre-save, post-save, etc. same for, for delete, to a notification function, and the notification function, which in turn is called this method, which can decide if a knock or a message should be sent, serialize the message, and then send this. This part is executed in Django, in a normal Django model, because it is a normal model mix-in, and in turn calls this very simple consumer, we just listen on a, on a group, I just use a language to have different language notification, and it's sent to the, uh, the message to the, to the user. Uh, it is a very horrible idea, so I, I expect that next will we'll happen something, I don't know, maybe based on Django REST framework serializer or another, another th kind of thing. Uh, it would be a nice thing to, to talk during, during the sprints if you, are, if you are up to. So uh, in the end, channels made very easy to, to make use or even to re-enter a paradigm. I can, I've been able to build an asynchronous application without actually knowing the, how to build one. <laughs> And uh, so makes uh, the entry barrier lower and allows you to interact with the Django API, which is obviously awesome for the people in this, in this room. So thank you all. And any question? Thank you, Jacopo. We have time for a few questions, if you have them. There's a microphone right up at the front here. OK. <laughs> Andrew. I'm, I'm getting scared. <laughs> Hello. <coughs> Thank you for doing half my talk for me. It's very useful. Uh, <laughs> no, so, um, <coughs> sorry, my voice is gone. My question for you is, like, you know, with, with all the different things you've seen with channels, um, what, what part would you say still needs work? Like, what, what do you think is the rough edges with, the, with that kind of stuff still? Uh, well, for maybe, no, I have not alighted it. But um, for example, one pitfall is that if you don't define um, an, a method that handles an event, an event happens, you, you don't have any way to check this unless you write tests, obviously. But there is no safety check in that uh, regarding that. So you can send a message to a group, and then some consumer may fail because it doesn't handle that, that kind of event, that, that event. That's, that's, but uh, it, it took me a while to wrap my head up uh, around channels too, because I, I made some experiments with version one. And so uh, basically, the, the whole concepts part is how I try to structure my mind around channels too. But uh, after that is, no, uh, I find very easy to, to work with it. So great work. Thank you. <laughs> Are there more, more questions? One, two, no? OK. Thank you, Jacopo. Thank you very much.